Good evening. Welcome to This Week in Review. Tonight's stories include... Indiana's Inside Story. ...a year to Lions Foundation of Canada to make our... ...those were checked and uh, most were found to be... My main reason for this short meeting, or message, is to announce the time of our open house to discuss students' progress. Representative of the Burgio Lioness Club, Ms. Doris Pink, had a few words to say regarding the Lioness involvement with Canine Vision Canada. Okay, I'd like to uh, apologize for what's probably pretty poor sound. I've been having trouble with my throat. Just want to take a minute to uh, explain a little bit about those canisters that you'll be seeing in the stores you know, within the next week or so. They're put there by the Lions and Lioness Clubs, and they're to support, uh, as it says in here, Canine Vision Canada. Now, Canine Vision Canada is a project of the Lions Foundation of Canada, and the Lions Foundation of Canada works with the uh, seeing eye dogs and the uh, hearing hear dogs and the organ transplant. And they do a lot of uh, very good work like for people all over Canada, people are less fortunate. But of course they couldn't do it without financial support of the general public. And these canisters are just one way of getting this financial support. They operate much the same way as the ones on muscular dystrophy. Uh, you'll see those in the stores and you just drop in your change. And I guess that's what we're asking you to do. As you go to the store, if you have some change and you know, you, you don't feel like saving it or your change doesn't buy you very much and you just put it in the canisters and head up to a fair sum and it will go to some worthwhile project. Um, also, during the week, um, we have two tapes here. One is called the uh, Lions Foundation of Canada Presents Hearing Hear Dogs of Canada and the other one, um, the Lions Foundation of Canada Presents They'll Never Walk Alone and so one is for the hearing and one is for the sight. And they're little short films that tell you a little bit about the work of the uh, Lions Foundation of Canada. In other words, a little bit of the work they do with the money they collect from those canisters. Those canisters, of course, are not only in uh, Burgio, they're all over our District 41S1. But that is not the only way uh, Lions Foundation of Canada gets money. They do get it from Alliance organizations and from the general public. For example, our Lioness Club uh, donates $100 a year to Lions Foundation of Canada to make our president a life member of the organization. Now, a lot of other towns, um, other people do that. They do make the donation in memory of a loved one or something like that, and, and they do make that person a life member of the Lions Foundation of Canada. And if anyone is interested in doing that, of course, they can just contact uh, any member of the Lions Lioness Club for uh, information on how to go about doing it. Mr. Sid Trope, principal at St. John Central High, has an update for us now on what's been happening at SJCH. Good evening. As principal of St. John Central High School, I thought it was a good idea to use this means of communication to reach as many of you as possible. My main reason for this short meeting, or message, is to announce the time of our open house to discuss students' progress. It will be Tuesday evening, December the 11th, from 3.30 to 5.30, and Wednesday night, December the 12th, from 7.30 to 9.30. That is, pending whether there is work on the fish plant or not. If there's any changes in that time, I will be letting you know. Any parent can come any of these times. Also, a special invitation is extended to the student to accompany the parent if he or she so desires. We are looking forward to seeing you all. Seeing that I have been given this opportunity by the BBS to talk to you, I'd like to tell you a bit about a few of the things that we're trying to do at the school. Last year, we started on a school improvement plan, hopefully to try, among other things, to improve the image of our school. I believe that we are succeeding. Our teachers are making a special effort in this regard, 
and students are cooperating well. Also, you as parents can and are playing, I'm sure, a large role right here. I have phone calls now and then from parents and other people in the community supporting what we are trying to do. For your encouragement and cooperation, I'd like to thank you very much. Many of you phone to say where your son or daughter is when they're out of school, that is when they're absent. This is greatly appreciated. More so today than ever before, we are all being held accountable for things that happen. If a student is not in school, we're supposed to know where the student is. That means it all boils down to the safety of the student, that is each and every one of them. Just a little bit about our detention room. Rather than suspend students right away for not doing their best or not behaving properly, they are being kept in after school. This is a minor disciplinary action and we feel it is working. Now, if a student does not cooperate, then stronger action would have to be taken, or in cases of serious offenses, strong action would have to be taken. But I am happy to say that in most cases, most cases don't go beyond the detention room. Another main goal we have set for our school is to cut down on the dropout rate. Here it appears we are succeeding. More so today than ever before, everyone has seen the need for a good education. I just plead to you to encourage your son or daughter to stay in school and finish their education. In the long run, it will benefit each and every one of them. Today, we are putting a lot of emphasis on the library. Actually, it's not called a library anymore, but rather a resource center. Since reading books is only one means of learning, students today need to have access to information and know how to get through the volumes of information available and pick out what they need. As time goes on, more and more emphasis is going to be placed on resource-based learning. Also, a while back, we uh, had a fundraiser. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for supporting in this cause. We raised nearly $2,000. And we will spend this in the school on extracurricular activities. That is, in uh, regards to certain clubs, like math clubs, or regards to sports, drama clubs, especially for sending students out to other communities paying for transportation, etc. And this is very important for our school as a whole. It helps the image of our school. These are a few of the things that are going on that I thought I would tell you about. We will keep trying to improve our school and I ask you all for your cooperation. We all want to look upon our school as a very important part of this community. By never being too satisfied, I think we can grow and expand and produce students who are doing their best. If our students are, and I, uh, and I like this phrase, on the leading edge, then I'm sure they can change our school and do their small part in changing this world. I'll end off by thanking you for listening, and again, please come along to Open House, because we want to see you all there. Thank you very much, and good night. President of the Holman School, Ann Parsons, presented the awards for the recent drug awareness contest this past week. Good evening, everyone. A little bit of news now from the Holman School. Uh, we held our election of officers at our last meeting. Uh, they are as follows. Claudine Ann is treasurer again this year. Uh, Rose Vatcher is secretary. Wanda Melbourne is vice president, and I'm president again this year. And I'd like to thank John Melbourne at this time for being our Vice President for the last two years. Again this year we took part in Drug Awareness Week, but we would like it to be Drug Awareness Year. 
In order to encourage children to, to participate, we put on a contest. And I would like to thank Dion Dix and Shauna Spencer for doing the posters to advertise our contest. While we had lots of posters and essays and poems, so we made some really hard decisions. When we started, we thought we would have four, we would award four prizes, but we ended up awarding six. Uh, we had some really, really good posters. And we'd like to thank the students who entered, thank the teachers for helping out, and the parents that also participated. And you did a really good job. Thanks. Keep up the good work. You had some really good ideas. I would like to uh, give a little message to the parents. Teach your children to say no to drugs. Uh, remember, the theme for this year is you can make a difference. And you can make a difference. Remember, we are our children's best teachers and role models, so please always keep that in mind. And one last little note. Uh, the report cards came home from school last week. The students, uh, well, the teachers had an open house at the elementary school this week, and they have open house at the high school next week. So I'd like for all your parents to make an effort to attend and talk to your child's teacher. And our next meeting will be held after Christmas. It will be announced later, so we'll keep you informed. Thank you. Our first poster is Lindy Tucker. This is what Lindy draw. Okay, Lindy, would you come and get your... There you go. Thank you for doing a nice job. And our next one is Marie Sand. Marie, you want to come up and show your poster? Just show your poster down so that the camera can see it. Marisa says, if you do drugs, you do not know what you are doing. And that's true. And Marisa. Thank you. The next one is Dion Dix. And this is Dion's poster. And Dion's is the inside store. It's a really nice poster too. There you go, Dion. Thank you. The next one is Lewis Amon. And Lewis got a profile of a drug abuser. Very nice. There you go, Lewis. Thank you. And the next one is Beverly in the past. Posters. Do you want to do radio? A game for keeps. You see it all around you, the harm that drugs can do, and you have a foolish notion that will never happen to you. But my friend, you are mistaken. Don't let it take you by surprise, because drugs are vicious killers beneath their brilliant disguise. One talk may lead to another, and soon that's not enough to satisfy the craving you've developed for the stuff. Your whining for the feeling that you experience when you're high may cause you to do strange things like steal, deceive, and lie. Then one day you realize that it's a habit you can't break. Living a day without the drugs is something you can't take. So now the fun is over and drugs are your best friend. Your life's a dark tunnel for which there is no end. You see, drugs are a gamble and it's up for you to choose. But remember it's a divvy game and chances are you'll lose. This one is Kelly McDonald. Kelly wrote a really nice essay. There you go, Kelly. Why do people do drugs? Many people ask this question and know the answer, but still do drugs. What can drugs do to you? Many people know the answer to this question too, but still do drugs. Hi, I'm Kelly McDonald, a seventh grade student from St. John Central High School. I'm doing this essay to encourage people to say no to drugs. A lot of, a lot of people might say, what could a seventh grade student possibly know about drugs? Not as much as someone with a higher education. But I, bet I know a lot more than some people because I know how to say no to drugs. And a lot of people who have a much higher education than I do still can't say no. I can make you say no, but I can try to make a difference. Everyone can. People smoke because of peer pressure. Your so-called friends do it, and if you don't, you're not a part of the group. The same thing goes for drugs and alcohol. Then you think you're so cool. You go to a party, everyone's smoking, drinking beer, and doing drugs. As soon as you walk through that door, you're making a big mistake. 
people will be coming at you like flies, and and that would lead you to believe that you got all kinds of friends. That would ask you to do all kinds of drugs, to smoke and to drink. Now, no ten say will say yes. Why? Simply because of peer pressure. You want to become a part of a group and walk into that room on top of the world, but you would be wrong. You'd be in your own little world, doing things you'd never done before. That one cigarette and one bottle of beer could lead to ten cigarettes and ten bottles of beer. Before you know it, you're drunk or even stoned. The next party will be the same things, and the next. Send all the drugs and walk out of that room with your hand held on, not on another planet. You can make a difference. Invite your friends to a party with their drugs, alcohol, and cigarettes. Turn on the music and dance with your friends. Laugh, talk, and have fun. You'll soon find out that you can have fun without getting drunk or going on a drug trip. Do fun things that you actually remember the next morning. Perhaps the sister will go through someone's in who does drugs and they'll stop or perhaps no one will even think twice. But at least I'm trying to make a difference, to make people aware of drugs and to show that everyone can make a difference say no to drugs. And the posters, we have a lot of posters around the stores and around different buildings around town. So have a look at them when you see them. Plus, we're going to be posting those posters up too, so you can have a good look at them. The winning entries are on display here at the BBS office. Now over to Corporal White with the results of Safe Driving Week. Good evening. This is an RCMP news report uh, for telecast on December the 9th, uh, which was taped on Sunday afternoon at uh, 2.30. I'm very happy to report an accident-free safe driving week. A number of vehicles were checked and uh, most were found to be operating safely. A number of tickets were issued for mechanical defects and seatbelt violations. Our patrols also noted an increase in the use of children's safety seats and belts. During the past week, our office has investigated a number of complaints. As a result of a patrol to the teenage dance, at uh, 1 a.m. on Saturday near the lodge, a 21-year-old uh, male resident of Bergio uh, was arrested. It is alleged that he committed an assault on a teenager. He was subsequently locked up overnight and released the next morning. He faces two charges under the criminal code and he is to appear in court on the 21st of January. A 29-year-old uh, male resident of Bergio was arrested on Friday, the uh, 7th, of uh, December. It is alleged uh, that he committed a common assault and, and an assault causing bodily harm and a theft of beer. Uh, these incidents occurred approximately 3 a.m. Uh, on Friday. Uh, following his arrest, he was released on an undertaking before a justice of the peace, and he uh, will also be charged with a breach of a condition of his undertaking in that he was not to communicate with one of the persons assaulted. Uh, he is to appear in court on the 21st of January. A number of boats have been checked on the water in the past two weeks, resulting in charges being laid under the Migratory Bird Convention Act. On the 1st of December, in White Bear Bay, as a result of a uh, boat checked by um, the RCMP and the Wildlife Department, a male resident of Ramya has been charged with hunting with an unplugged shotgun. Also on that day, a male resident of uh, Bergio was charged for being in possession of protected birds, uh, in this case, pigeons or guillemots. The guns and the game were seized. Court in these cases is also set for the 21st of January. Boats were also checked on the 2nd of December, and all were found to be in order. Uh, the general public is reminded that persons operating boats which are not properly equipped or registered in accordance with the small vessels regulations will be charged accordingly. As well, any persons found to be uh, violating the Migratory Bird Convention Act will also be charged. Uh, there are a number of protected birds which are, you are not permitted to kill. A few of these birds are pigeons or guillemots, bullbirds or icebirds, and puffins as well as harlequin ducks. Wreck Island is one of the uh, few remaining breeding areas for harlequin ducks, 
and our patrols will be concentrating on that area. I'd like for you to have a safe uh, tur hunting season and handle guns properly. One of the uh, persons in the boats checked earlier this week passed loaded guns over to, uh, to us to be checked. I, uh, at this time, I wish to thank all the uh, numbers of people who have called our office uh, in the past few days or contacted me concerning the uh, large amount of water in our police boat in Furby's Harbor. Uh, the boat's bilge pump is not working, but the boat will, uh, will be quite safe when she's full of water. She's capable of being operated while being uh, totally full of water. Uh, thank you very much for your calls. Uh, just last night, our office became involved in a fire investigation in Gray River. Uh, the sea and the weather conditions are such that um, our members of the RCMP who, are on, who were en route to Gray River uh, last night in the lifeboat uh, Bergio had to return to port. Uh, up to 2 p.m. Sunday afternoon, uh, neither the Coast Guard boat Bergio or the Coast Guard boat Ann Harvey or the motor vessel uh, Gallipoli, or any type of air transport has been able to get into Gray River. Uh, at present, uh, up to this time, 2 p.m. Sunday, uh, the RCMP have been uh, unable to get a man into Gray River. Uh, therefore, further details of this investigation uh, can't be released pending receipt of further information. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, good evening. On behalf of the uh, Virgil Lions Club, I would like to thank all the businesses and organizations that supported our Sanitas Parade. Some businesses and organizations supported the parade by means of donations in the form of money and items such as apples, uh, potato chips, bars, candy, and so on. These items and the cash donations went towards doing up goodie bags for the children in all, we did up 600 goodie bags with a value of about $2 per bag. These were all given out to the children, and I'm sure uh, they were enjoyed by them. I would also like to thank the youth groups, businesses, and organizations that entered or sponsored a float in the parade. These were all good quality floats and reflected a lot of effort and planning, and I'm sure made a real hard job for the judges. I would like to commend everyone for entering good, good quality floats in the parade. On behalf of the club, I would certainly like to con congratulate the winners, and I'm sure the decisions by the judges were well justified. To the judges, congratulations and thank you for a job well done. Uh, the Lions Club also has another committee that becomes uh, very active during this time of year. This is the safety committee. There are 10 stations around town where lifelines or life rings are placed. These st stations have been checked out and lines replaced if necessary. In some stations, we have a problem keeping the uh, line or rope that is attached to the uh, life rings uh, intact. Uh, what happens is that uh, for some reason or another, uh, children or whoever uh, seem to cut the rope from the life ring and uh, for some reason make away with it. This is very serious business. So we would like for the uh, parents to explain to their children the importance of these life rings and lifelines and uh, what would likely happen if uh, someone needed to use one and there is no lifeline there. A drowning could result very quickly, whereas if there is a life ring there, then it could save a life. The areas where life rings are usually uh, taken or made away with are the government wharf area, and again that's a very important area, an area where a life ring could come in very handy any time. 
and also the Mrs. Pond area and the small pond near Spencer's store. So if anyone in these areas uh, see anybody tampering with these uh, stations and uh, taking the rope uh, and cutting it off and making away with it, would you please inform the uh, Virgil Lions Club or the RCMP? Thank you very much. Mayor McDonald as the proposed Skidoo regulations that were drew up at a recent council meeting. Mayor McDonald, I understand that at a recent council meeting a draft of Skidoo regulations were drawn up. Would you care to elaborate on these for us? That's right, Dave. Uh, at our last uh, council meeting there was uh, a draft Skidoo regulations uh, drafted to be presented to the general public for uh, input in, into those. and. Uh, I guess first of all, the reason why this came about is uh, over the last couple of years, the number of skidoos in our community has increased, and we have uh, received some complaints from the general public on uh, skidoos in certain areas, and the town council felt that uh, at this time we should sit down and see if we can solve the problem. Uh, so this is why we've uh, drafted a proposed set of regulations that will be posted uh, around the community in public places tomorrow, uh, giving the general public some input before uh, those regulations become law. So, uh, would you care to read some of the regulations for us? Well, I guess basically what the regulations are stating, uh, there's a couple options, I guess, and one is to uh, ban skidooing in the community altogether, which uh, would uh, skidoo wouldn't be permitted to be driven unless uh, outside of the Belfield area or Silo uh, area. The other one is uh, what we're looking for is input from the general public that the possibility is there that council may designate uh, certain areas to be used by skidoos like a skidoo trail uh, taking you out of the community and uh, and into the community. So. Uh, those things uh, is what we're asking the general public to uh, to get involved in, and uh, we would like for them to uh, submit to council in writing. Uh, it's no good to uh, just phone somebody, one of the councillors. That this has got to be uh, submitted in writing to the town council office. So, when is the deadline for these proposals? What we have asked asked the general public to. Uh, to present their uh, proposals to the town council in writing by December 19th. Uh, that's when we have our next council meeting, so we certainly would like to get the things uh, organized and put in place for this winter uh, skidooing. Uh, I might point out that uh, the reason why, again, is uh, we're concerned about the safety of uh, small kids in certain areas, uh, on the ponds in particular, uh, Man T Path is another area where uh, there's been uh, close uh, accidents uh, that's been brought to our attention. So we're uh, concerned about this and uh, if we can some way get uh, the input from the general public on where we're going into this, I think it would be beneficial for the skidoers and uh, the smaller kids that are sliding and skating. And I think everybody, everybody uh, in the community would be uh, more satisfied and more at ease. So after you get the proposals from the public, will you be doing up another draft to get approval again, or? Well, uh, it depends on which way council will go. Like I pointed out, number one is, uh, you know, the, the option is there to ban skidooing, and then we also have, uh, have the option to designate skidoo trails, so after we receive input from the general public, I guess yes, we will be making a decision on which way we will move on uh, this particular matter. Okay, Mayor McDonald, thanks very much for sharing this with us. You're welcome, Dave. Well, that's about it for this week. Please stay tuned now for the bandwagon. On behalf of BBS and the BBS volunteers, I'm Dave Cooper. Have a great week. Until next week, good night.